Unlike in America, here in the UK, you can walk off the street into a betting shop and gamble on almost anything you want, including politics. Last year, with the rise of Donald Trump, millions of pounds were staked on the US election. And this seems to be part of a trend that's continuing. Now, political betting isn't necessarily a new thing. It's usually treated as a novelty during election seasons, since polling data makes the results much more predictable. But when Brexit happened in June 2016, it came as a shock to many, including the gambling industry. The UK-based gambling company Ladbrokes even admitted that the betting markets got the EU referendum completely wrong. As a result, a lot more people are seeing political betting as an unpredictable and enticing form of gambling, including Charlie Watson, a casual gambler who bet roughly $100 on Trump to win the US election and got roughly 500 back. So Charlie, you had the good foresight to bet on a Donald Trump victory. Yes, I did. What made you do that? I mean, the odds were fantastic at five to one when there's only two outcomes, so it seemed like a good idea. And would you say that political betting is something that you would sort of entertain doing previously in the past, or not, is it? Not particularly, no. I'm more sports betting myself normally, but um, I don't know, maybe the Brexit thing somewhat sparked something that made me think I needed to do it. Recently, what we have seen is you can win big on it. Betting on Donald Trump has gotten so rampant, Ladbrokes has actually hired a political analyst to oversee all the new kinds of possible bets. There are some people who have made absolute fortunes betting on politics over the last year or two, partly because of Brexit, partly because of Trump. When it comes to markets like these here, 6 to 4 for Donald Trump to visit Russia this year, or 25 to 1 for Donald Trump to win the Nobel Peace Prize, how do you come up? with new markets to bet on? So certain of it is just us trying to be creative and think of new things and test them out in the marketplace and see if customers like to have a bet on them. But also a lot of it is just custom demand. We can see on our Twitter feeds what people want to bet on. They can ask us directly for odds on very specific things. It was really surprising just how many people wanted to bet on him not even being inaugurated, even after he'd won the election. And we get a lot of requests for things like, will there be a military coup in the United States? His links with Russia, and will he be impeached? So even though the British bookmaking industry lost a few quid on Donald Trump last year, he's pretty good for business this year. What is the weirdest request when it comes to political betting that you've dealt with? I had a customer come in in the first week of Donald, Donald Trump's presidency and he asked for a price of Donald Trump to be assassinated within the first week. We wouldn't actually take that bet for him. So you had an unhappy punter that couldn't uh, bet him to be yeah, shot? Yeah. <laughs> Say la vie. Creativity aside, I couldn't help but feel like all the weird ways to put money down on Trump could be just a flash in the pan. So I met up with Alistair Meeks, a guy who's been gambling on politics before its recent rise in popularity, to see if he thought we'd reached a new era of political betting. For me, election nights are um, like horse, horse racing, so what I like is lots of elections, because that's where the money is. For someone who approaches it in this manner, yeah. how much did you win? On Brexit night, I won 5,000. For the uh, two by-elections, I won just under a grand. I am aware of, um, of people who take it much more seriously. On the night that Donald uh, Trump won, I'm aware of someone who won just under 100 grand. So traditionally, political betting has been seen as somewhat of a novelty. Do you think it's moved on in the last few years and now it's up there with sort of sports gambling? Not yet. Uh, and from my viewpoint, thank goodness. At the moment, I think the markets are in an intermediate stage where they're no longer pure novelty, but I don't think they're at anything like the depth that one would see, for example, on football or horse racing where the amount of analysis that goes behind the people who seriously bet on that is, is frightening, frankly. And the US presidential election only takes place every four years. Um, it's a four-yearly cycle. It'll be interesting to see whether the, uh, there's increased betting in the midterms in uh, 2018. But the nature of political betting is to go on from one cycle to the other and not necessarily concentrate just on the US. But I am quite sure that come 2020, the market will be even bigger. Hopefully, Betting on the 2020 election isn't the only form of political engagement people do. But for now, the recent global uncertainty has made political gambling hard to resist. The really big one coming up is the French presidential election in a month or two. And there we've seen enormous amounts of money on Marine Le Pen to be elected president. Yeah, I was speaking to uh, one of my mates the other night. We are thinking that we might give it a go on the uh, French presidential election. Obviously, there's sort of a right wing trend that uh, Europe's following at the moment. Might have a little stab at Le Pen, maybe give it a go. The one thing that I would absolutely counsel anyone against is saying it's never going to happen because trust me, sooner or later it does. Donald Trump got elected. We're leaving the EU. Those are things that a lot of people said couldn't possibly happen. Well, they did.